Hello and welcome back to Ducascopy TV. I'm Darren McDermott. Well, Ireland had its first 10 year bond sale on Wednesday since receiving a bailout in 2010. The ECB has said that for OMT to be activated, countries must be in an international adjustment programme and have returned to the bond market. Today I'm joined on the line by Philip O'Sullivan, Chief Economist at NCB in Dublin, to have a look at this in further detail. So first of all, Philip, can you just walk me through the new shift in investor sentiment for Ireland, focusing on Ireland's entrance back to the bond market? Yeah, I think we've seen a significant shift in investor sentiment uh, towards Ireland. Uh, in recent times, we've seen both the banks and the sovereign uh, make a strong return to the bond markets. Uh, since November, uh, both Bank of Ireland and AIB, which would be the two largest institutions uh, here, have been uh, very active in terms of raising new covered bonds. Bank of Ireland, incidentally, is raising $500 million this morning uh, from the sale of a new five-year covered bond. And in terms of the sovereign, uh, since the start of the year, it has raised €7.5 billion Euro from the syndicated tap of a 2017 Treasury bond, and also, as you rightly point out, uh, the €5 billion new 10-year Treasury bond uh, that was issued on Wednesday. Um, I think that this really is reflective of the shift in attitudes from investors towards Ireland. I think the, the country has made very impressive progress in terms of passing nine quarterly reviews from the Troika since entering the bailout program. And, uh, you know, I would be confident as the fiscal jaws between tax revenue and government spending are slowly being closed or steadily being closed. And um, the government, uh, you know, is obviously moving towards a successful exit of the bailout program at the end of the year. So we should see uh, further developments on the funding front uh, along the lines of what we've been seeing this week. But one thing to, to bear in mind, though, is that Ireland can afford to be very... Uh, selective or opportunistic in terms of how it engages. Like, for example, the NTMA, which is the country's debt management office, is actually sitting on in excess of 30 billion of cash at mm -hmm. the moment. That's an amount of approximately 20% of Irish GDP. So it's something that, you know, in, that's, that's a large multiple, or well, it's not a large, it's a multiple of, of expected maturities this year and also what the exchequer deficit should come in at. So in terms of um, where we're likely to see new issues come, I think that the, the government and, and certainly the institutions as well um, can afford to kind of wait and, and if, they, if they get an attractive bid, they'll probably look to hit that. But, you know, they're, they're, not, they're certainly not going to be uh, forced to issue for the sake of issuing. And uh, we believe, for example, with today's bank foreign issuance that is likely to have been instigated by a reverse inquiry from, uh, in, from an institutional investor. And if we compare Ireland to countries such as Italy, Spain and Greece, what type of differences in sentiment are we witnessing and why? I think if you look at the way the spreads have evolved in recent months, uh, what we've seen is that Ireland is, appears to be transitioning from being a peripheral country into something um, resembling kind of a, a semi-core uh, country. So we're not, we're not quite at the core level, uh, but you know, we are starting to decouple from the other so-called pigs countries. And you know, even if you look at where the new 10-year is trading, that's just, just barely over 4% this morning. And that compares with 4.6 for Italy, 4.9 for Spain, and 5.8 for Portugal. So, you know, we would expect to see uh, the gap between Ireland and the other uh, countries that it was previously lumped in with. We would expect to see that widen as Ireland transitions, uh, you know, into an area kind of between where the core countries are and where the uh, peripheral countries are trading. And finally, Philip, Irish Taoiseach Prime Minister Enda Kenny has said that his objective is to have Ireland's deficit down to 3% by 2015. Now, in terms of reducing debt and increasing growth and solving the Irish unemployment problem, do you think it will be a slow but steady path to a healthier economy? Uh, yeah, like, it's like you say, the, the, the state railway company here used to have an ad campaign which was, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. And I think that that's a good metaphor for where Ireland is at. Uh, we have seen unemployment improve very steadily. It peaked at 15% in the first quarter of last year. At the latest reading, it was down to 14.1%. Uh, obviously, there's still a large unemployment pro uh, problem, but we are making progress in terms of clearing that, uh, with the private sector having returned to positive employment growth in the second half of last year. In terms of the fiscal position, uh, I think that the deal on the promissory notes uh, will facilitate the government hitting its, uh, its fiscal objectives 
we expect the deficit would be only 2.6% of GDP by 2015, and that's comfortably inside the government's objective of getting it uh, just inside 3%. Thank you very much, Philip. Well, viewers, don't forget to tune back in on Monday as I will be looking at what we should be expecting to see from the markets next week in our programme the week ahead. But for now, have a great weekend.